Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. It is time for another book review. Now, in the last week or so, I've been on leave and have been using this time to read the books that I have in my own library. The libraries are still not open yet after lockdown, so I think they'll be opening up very soon, uh, possibly tomorrow, maybe next week. So I thought here's an opportunity to go and revisit my own library my own bookshelves and pick a book out. But those of you who know me probably think, you've picked out a George Orwell book, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, I have. I love Orwell, I love Orwell. But I thought I'd start with his very first book called Burmese Days. Now, some of you have already mentioned to me, oh, you gotta read this book, or oh, you gotta read the, you know, this books of Orwell. Rest assured, I will get round to reading all of his books. I've got all his essays, I've got all his letters, I've got all his books. I will read them all. But I thought I'll start right at the start. That's the best place to start, isn't it? Now, Burmese Days was published in 1934. It was his very first book. And as he was someone who lived and worked in Burma in the years of 1922 to 1927, this book is really a, a critique of colonialism. And I had to smile to myself. Well, smiling's not the right word. I had to kind of really sit and reflect because I remember going to Singapore some years back. And when you go to Singapore, right, the very first thing you do is you go to Raffles and go and experience this kind of different old worldy ambience with the fans on the ceiling, with the rattan chairs at the at this club. And you could imagine what life would have been like for the ruling class who were the British in that area while you were sipping your Mai Tais or whatever. Well, that's what I was doing. So what Burmese Days did for me was kind of throw out all that romantic ideas I had uh, and dreamed up while I was sip sipping my cocktail there to really kind of lay it bare at how awful colonialism was in the, in these days. So what is this book about? It's based on it's based on the experience of George Orwell when he had, when he was working in the police force. So it's a very loose actually I shouldn't say it's loose, it's very fairly close to the mark. So we get introduced to the character of John Florey who we can surmise that it's really the George Orwell character. Now, Flory's a white timber merchant and he's got a Burmese mistress and he's been living and working in Burma for many, many years and he somehow seems really tied to the place. He knows that he wants to leave Burma and go back to England, but at the, at the same time, there is something really connecting him to the place. Now, John Florey is a type of person who really can connect with the local Burmese people and he makes every effort to learn their language, learn their customs, learn the traditions. And he's genuinely someone who is an open, curious character. So very unlike the British rule, ruling class there. And he tries to keep away from the people attending the European club. Think of it like the Raffles Club, right? And what happens is these uh, British people every night would go to the, the European club and it was a very white, well, it was whites only. They were, um, their servants were the local Burmese people. And it was there that they would just chit chat and talk about British stuff and where you would see the real disparity between the classes, okay? The themes of this book really are all about, I guess, as I was reading this book, I was seeing the Flory character as someone who was white, who was British background, but who did not want to connect or be part of this concept of British rule in a local native area. So he didn't agree with it. And yet he was part of the system, which he despised. He also was very, very lonely. So this theme of the book was solitude. He just doesn't know what to do with himself, but he knows that he needs to find a partner, someone to share 
his life and his love of the country that he can talk to, that he could um, basically connect with. And she comes in the form of an orphaned niece who comes in from Paris to live with her aunt and uncle. And given that she's not married, her aunt and uncle invite her out to Burma, to this uh, village where John Flory is, so that she could find a suitable husband, get married, which was the typical thing that they would do there. So John Flory meets Elizabeth and he falls for her. Now, I have to tell you, I despise the Elizabeth character because she was someone who personified the English, um, I guess, the English ideal. So when John Flory wanted to talk to her and show her all the beautiful things about Burma, she had a, a very uppity, very snobbish view on the fact. And she started to get fearful, fearful in the sense that it reminded her of the time that when she was in Paris, her mother had very artistic bohemian friends who were all about, well, they didn't fit the system. And so to Elizabeth, John Flory didn't fit the system. All she wanted was just someone that they could, that she could talk to about shooting elephants or going hunting and doing those typical English, colonial English things that she would have done. So she, she didn't want, I guess, a deeper connection. Just the way that she spoke to Flory, the way that she fobbed him off all the time, would irritate the hell out of me. But it actually showed in what Orwell did was showing us that you can be part of the system and whether you can agree to that system or you can actually work outside of that system but at the same time if you do that you are I guess isolated from your peers within it because you're not going to be understood. Now throughout this whole story there is another theme of corruption and the corruption came from one of the local officials his name was Yupo Kin he's a corrupt magistrate and he's out to destroy the reputation of Flory's friend who is Dr Vera Swami, who is an Indian. Now, Dr. Vera Swami is a cultured person. He's a doctor and he values the friendship of Flory. And in the evenings, they would talk on all cultured aspects. But what one thing that we also recognize was Dr. Vera Swami held in high esteem the English culture. To him, he thought the English were more civilized than the Orientals, as he called himself all the locals. And so he also disconnected with Flory talking badly about his own people, if that makes sense. So Dr. Veraswamy mentions to Flory one, one time that he feels as if there's going to be a vendetta against him by this corrupt magistrate. And the only way that Dr. Veraswamy could be saved from this vendetta or this this action, this corrupt action, would be to be nominated as one of the local members for the European Club. And he asks John Flory to support his application for the European Club. After all, if you're part of the European Club, effectively, you can't be touched by the locals. But little do we know that Yupo Kin has something else up his sleeve to try and also claim this honour for himself. So we're given another perspective as well about the fact that even if you're not part of the ruling class, the Orientals, as Dr. Veraswamy called himself, though that's quite derogatory and it's not something that you would call people nowadays. But even he thought that He's not in a system and he needs to seek out protection from a system, the colonial system, in order for him to uh, to see through this. And again, this didn't sit really well with me. And I guess reading it as someone who is in 2021 and looking at all the language in here, which was actually quite racist, but this is at the time it presented... I guess, a view or a perspective of what life was like in colonial Burma 
and in places in any colonial um, uh, times. It was racist, there was corruption, and corruption would happen regardless of what, you know, whether you were the locals or whether you're uh, part of the British. Look, there's other elements in here. This, the whole story itself um, was re really interesting. Also from, I guess, thinking about as a female who was of an unmarried state and having to worry to get married in order to be deemed appropriate or not to be talked about by your peers, it was also understanding Elizabeth's situation too. And this whole pretense of what the British would do just to get part and be part of the upper class or a system where you were deemed better than everyone else. And that was indicative when um, Elizabeth scorns John Florey when a new character, Verol, comes in, who is the new uh, police officer. And Verol comes from, well, Verol just strikes me as a an ultra-rich, upper-class, public school-trained snob who holds everyone there in contempt. But... Elizabeth and her auntie do their utmost to try and get Elizabeth in her face, they, in his face, so they could, could do, do things together in the hope that he would offer her marriage. But we know in that situation, the classes also are against you. He's not going to ask a lower class person to get married. So there's all these themes of racism, solitude, colonialism, corruption, and just a great, great picture of what colonialism would have been like. It's not a pretty, <laughs> I guess it wasn't a pretty time, but um, I really enjoyed this book. At times it was a little bit more difficult to read simply because there were a lot of Burmese uh, words and a lot of, I guess, Burmese culture that, but ultimately the themes came out really strongly in this very, very good piece of work here. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, even though I got angry at the characters, especially Elizabeth and Verrill and John Florey with what happens to him in the end. Oh, my God. Um, read this book if, uh, if you're interested based on my review. I would highly recommend it. Let me know what you think if you've read this book. So thank you for listening and thank you for watching.